Fighters of the main intelligence agency of Ukraine destroyed another speedboat belonging to the invading Russian army. The footage of the operation was released by the main intelligence agency. The Tunitz type speedboat exploded and was damaged as a result of the attack by the Magura V-5 Marine drone. As a result of the operation, three more floating vehicles belonging to the occupying army were damaged. The Russian military is now deploying fewer ships into the open waters of the Black Sea. This became possible thanks to the Ukrainian Magura surface drone, according to the representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine Yevon Yerin. According to him, thanks to the drones, the activity of the Russian forces in the open sea has decreased. As for the lack of good news, let's just say, watch, observe, and I think you will soon see something pleasant with Magura's participation, Yaren said. The Russian army is running out of light armored vehicles. It has reached a plateau in terms of ammunition, and today the number of shells is much smaller than two years ago at the beginning of the full-scale invasion. The enemy is increasing the production of drones and trying to carry out more massive strikes on infrastructure facilities in Ukraine, but it does not have an infinite number of tanks and motivated manpower, so it is quite possible to predict that the Russian army will exhaust its offensive potential in the fall. This opinion was expressed by Maximilian Andronikov, Deputy Commander of the Freedom of Russia Legion, Caesar, in an interview with Vasily Golovanov on the YouTube channel Fabrika Novosti. But it is not only the exhaustion of technical capabilities that will dampen the ardor of the Russian occupiers, the warring oppositionists added. There is another important factor. The mood among Russian citizens is becoming increasingly anti-war. People are beginning to understand that the adventure that Putin has started is not at all needed by the people of the Russian Federation. He said, look, in two weeks, there have been four dam breaks in Russia. Putin keeps talking about some kind of breakthrough. He probably means a scientific and technical breakthrough. But so far, only dams that are not very complex hydraulic structures are bursting. But he can't even maintain them in normal working order, Andronikov noted. He also answered the question of what the Legion would do if military actions froze. According to him, the Legionnaires, as volunteers, could very well go home and begin on their native land those actions that they consider necessary. But as a citizen of the Russian Federation, a Russian person and a Christian, I will not lay down my arms as long as Putin and his clique exist. Because if Putin personally dies, the system will remain the same. I will fight against it with all available forces and means. Military, political, ideological and many of my legionnaire brothers are ready to follow my example," said the leader of Freedom of Russia. A guest on Russian state TV has floated the idea of a nuclear strike on Russia's Kursk region amid a cross-border raid by Ukraine that has so far seen its forces occupy at least 11 settlements according to Newsweek. The remarks were made by propagandist Sergei Mardan on the show Solovyov Live. A portion of the broadcast was posted to social media by Anton Gerashchenko, a former advisor to Ukraine's interior ministry. Russian propagandist Mardan threatens a tactical nuclear strike on armed forces of Ukraine soldiers in the Kursk region, wrote Gerashchenko. That's because Kursk region is an indigenous historical Russian core, he explains. Apparently different regions of Russia have different value for him. Newsweek recalls that thousands of Kursk residents have been evacuated and a state of emergency has been declared in the area that borders Ukraine's northeastern Sumy region. Ukraine on Tuesday deployed troops and armored vehicles into Kursk and Russian President Vladimir Putin and his defense ministry has since sought to downplay the scale of Ukrainian advances in the region. Those warheads that could possibly be attached to some Russian missiles are capable of doing a little bit more damage, said Madan on state TV. 
He added that he believes the world would be upset if Russia uses nuclear weapons in response to the Kursk offensive, but that the public would eventually understand that it was a logical decision. And as for all the opinions that have been discussed over the last two years about the impossibility of a nuclear strike by Russia, what could be the consequences? What could be the reaction of the West and the Global South in particular? Well, in this situation, I am personally absolutely convinced that the reaction will be, well, everyone will be upset, of course, a little bit. But in general, they will say, OK, it's logical, Mardan said. What did you expect? The fighting is not just on Russian territory. Kursk region is such a Russia that I don't even know what to compare it to. Such an indigenous historical core, the Russian core. And there's fighting going on there right now, Madan said. Therefore, a scenario in which a strike is launched against AFU military facilities with the use of nuclear warheads ceases to be theoretical, ceases to be unlikely.